Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning, Dallas. Hopefully you enjoyed the music while I was gone. Now I'm back. We're going to talk a little bit about health care. A lot of you have different questions. We post this topic to you. Some of you are furloughed. You've lost your job. Uh, you're on uh, just shortened days. And health care has become a question for you. So I've got Jonathan Wick, and he's here to talk about health care today. Jonathan, welcome to the Valder Beauty Show studio. Great. Thanks for having me. Healthcare was already fragile before this COVID stuff happened, right? And so uh, my book talks about uh, the struggle that providers have in getting paid and how patients don't have a really transparent way to access or pay for their health care. And I think those challenges were exacerbated with COVID-19. So affordability, coverage, and access have been a very large challenge for our nation's health care. The book talks through kind of four sections. One is, you know, what is going on, to your point? What are those, what are those things that are going wrong? Uh, secondly, it talks about, you know, how do I get paid? And, and by that, I mean, how does the provider get paid and how does the uh, patient pay for their health care? And then finally, do we have a promising future? I think the delivery of health care right now has lots of opportunity and lots of challenges. People kind of use the emergency department, for example, as a primary care physician's office, and TransUnion Healthcare has been measuring that data since COVID happened, and we're seeing ED visits come back at a much lower pace than outpatient visits. And what that tells me is that patients are seeking care in another setting, possibly because of fear of contracting COVID at a provider or maybe fear of cost, and that might be a trend that continues going forward. Yep. And the lady asked me, do you want to pay your portion? I said, well, how much is my portion? She told me $91. Mm. I said, well, how much is the overall bill? The bill was $1,200. Wow. And so I can see why people would bypass those and go to emergencies. I can see why they don't pay their bills because they're overwhelming. Is there any answers for us in your book? The book is called Healthcare Evolution, Helping Providers Get Paid in the Era of Insurance. You, so you bet. So uh, providers get paid from lots of sources, the government, insurance companies, and most importantly, patients. Patients represent about a third of most hospital bills these days, believe it or not. And those are in the forms of copay, coinsurance, and deductibles. Uh, how the book talks through uh, strategies for patients in terms of educating yourselves and maybe looking up the costs of, of, of care at different levels. So how much is it at the emergency room versus an urgent care versus the primary physician clinic? And I think if you shop like you would for cars or vacations or television sets or other things, you'd find that there are options for you as a patient. And I think that would help lower health care costs and also probably help with outcomes as well. It probably would, but one, you have to have a tenacity to research. Two, you have to have a little bit of an understanding of the industry to understand the language, the terminology, the jargon. But I like your book. Your book is a good start because it's broken down really simple, uh, four sections, what's going on, why is it so hard, Why? Uh, how I get paid, and uh, a promising future. Oh, so, good. Thank you so very much for, for being clear to us lay people <laughs> to help us have a better understanding. You bet. Why is it so important for the provider to get paid? I think hospitals are on their heels because of COVID, and, and partially that's because they saw patients in a volume or a surge that they hadn't seen before. And then secondarily, they've got some headwinds coming up surrounding unemployment and the shift from employer-sponsored insurance. And so you're going to see more self-pay and more Medicaid and, and possibly more Medicare-type patients, which really don't fund the overall cost of care. So that's going to cause more friction and more 
challenges for patients to, or providers to be able to continue their operations. Their profit margins took a dramatic hit during this. And so it's very important for providers to get creative and engage that patient population. Let them know that it's safe to come in. Let them know that there's flexible and payment options and they've got charity, loans, things to help those folks that maybe were impacted over COVID so that the care can continue to happen and people can access it in a way that they could pay for it. Hmm. Uh, Medicaid, Medicare. Uh, yeah. What does that do for us? Yeah, Texas has one of the highest uninsured rates. It's about 17% compared to the rest of the country, about eight or so. Um, you know, that's a, it's unfortunate, but Medicaid expansion has become so, somewhat of a political issue. And when you look at states that have expanded and those that have not, you see that they have better outcomes from a payment and care standpoint. Uh, it's it's debatable, and I think you could have a whole segment on uh, whether or not a state should expand Medicaid. Self-pay, uh, the studies have shown uh, dramatically that patients that don't have insurance don't get care, and patients that do have insurance do. And I, I think there's uh, some benefits from a patient outcome, uh, provider costs, and others in expansion. I would, uh, what you're seeing from COVID is states that have not expanded Medicaid in the past are very closely evaluating that. And, uh, maybe Texas will look at it more critically as we come into next year and we see how we perform through COVID, especially with the resurgence that's happening in that state. I don't think we're going to look at it more critically until there's a change in people who are making decisions. That's my personal opinion. Yep. But let me ask you, Jonathan, uh, you've written a previous book. Uh, you were the author of The Healthcare Revolution. Now you've written this book. Why are you so passionate about this? <laughs> I started in healthcare as a as a transporter, believe it or not, getting paid seven bucks an hour and and pushing patients around the hospital. And you learn a lot in a job like that. And slowly worked my way up through finance. I worked in a, at an insurance payer as well for a, for a big bad insurance company, and and uh, and actually came back into healthcare and operations. And then now I consult for hospitals. In all of those different uh, uh, experiences through my tenure, I, I saw healthcare costs go up. I saw fragmented systems of delivery and I really want to try to fix it. I don't think I can fix it myself. I think we all have to fix it. The last statement in the book talks about being bold and challenging ourselves to where we have to start thinking about the system and our overall health and well-being versus each of our own pocketbooks or profitability. And that's why I wrote a second book. The only feedback I got from the, the, the first book that was not positive was, well, how do you fix it all? You did a great job of explaining why we got into this mess and all the problems. The second book really is a solution-focused book that talks through what we can do as an industry to solve health care for the long term. One of the things, and I know uh, my time is limited with you, but one of the things I know that with COVID-19, we've talked about from wearing masks to hand sanitizer to distancing, but I never heard a lot about the health care, and I know somebody's got to pay for this. What's going on there? Yeah, so every every – hospital or every provider has what's called a payer mix and as I mentioned you know about a third of that mix is coming from the patient's pocketbook directly uh, they have commercial payers like Aetna, Anthem, United those that make up maybe 40 or 50 percent of that and then Medicare, Medicaid and the government programs make up the other third that mix is is very interesting because some payers pay for health care at a different rate than others. And so in the state of Texas, for example, there's a very high proportion of Medicaid uh, and there's a, a very low proportion of commercial insurance. And with that, you've got a, a windfall of economics that happen. There's also, as we mentioned, a very high uh, a proportion of patients that don't have any insurance at all. And so those that have 100% risk to the hospital need to have very flexible options and financial assistance uh, that's available to them so that they can help understand where the best place is to get their care, at what cost, and with the best outcomes. And that's where providers can really engage their patients early and help that outcome happen. And how do you find out uh, some of the answers to your questions? I, mean, I know you can get the book. Yeah. But is, there, is there a place online you want my audience to go and, and get some answers for this stuff? Because most of the questions I ask you today come from those that were posted on social media for me. You bet. 
Yeah, so uh, lots of places to get answers. Uh, TransUnion.com slash healthcare has a bunch of answers. We've provided a COVID-19 page out there. I encourage you to go look at that. Uh, believe it or not, CMS, the Centers for Medicaid, CMS.gov, has a really nice website that talks through what costs look like, how you navigate COVID. Your local hospital also has a website that navigate that has lots of information on it. Um, and I would encourage going there and hit that patient's link and look at the things that say paying my bill or what can I expect to pay my bill. Uh, that's federally mandated language that has to be in there for, for a regulation called 501R that talks about how financial assistance and payment options need to be very transparently displayed for the patient. Yeah, if I was going to write another book, I think I'm going to call it U.S. Healthcare versus the World. <laughs> we'll see how other how other countries compare to ourselves, but that's probably a few years out as we kind of navigate. I think our healthcare has a lot of opportunity in the U.S. to get improved, and I think it's a bright future. I think we're going to come out of COVID-19 with a better healthcare system than we did before. It's out there on Amazon, W-I-I-K, my last name. You can go find it. Thank you so much. Be healthy and be well. You too. Take care. And this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com. Hi, I'm Bounder BB, host of the Bounder BB Show. I have used Credit Help USA, the credit restoration company that's bonded and state certified. When you become a client of Credit Help USA, you become eligible for a set of stainless steel cookware from Credit Help USA and the Bounder BB Show. Get your credit straight today. Visit CreditHelpTX.com, click on the Bounder BB Show icon, and get started living life divinely.